Yeah, it's it's being recorded. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first part of this series of webinars uh, that should enable you to sell IoT and Sigfox connecti connectivity better. We strongly believe in at simple hardware in education and know-how transfer. And we think that in order to really provide the best solutions and the be best propositions to our clients and customers, we need to be deeply knowledgeable about the IoT devices, we need to be deeply knowledgeable about the verticals that uh, we are targeting or you are targeting. And that uh, it's not just nice presentations, but we really need to understand the, the demands and the solutions that are available for the clients. Uh, one of the things is that uh, we started this series uh, it shouldn't be just presentation about our products, even the, the products, our products are of course important and we would love if you would purchase them and if you would like them as we, we like them. Uh, but it's really about the general, it's about the general education. So we'll be talking uh, even about the sensors that are not implemented in our hardware that other partners are implementing. Uh, after, the, after the webinar, you definitely can uh, have a look at the partners.sigforce.com where uh, the, all the devices are listed by the different sensors and by the different use cases. So this is not, we'll be talking about a lot of stuff that we at Simple Hardware are not covering. And we ask you to go to partners.sigforce.com. Just briefly about my background. My name is Pavel Sodom. I'm the co-owner of uh, like, uh, couple of Sigfox operators in Central uh, in Central Europe, uh, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Switzerland, Austria, Liechtenstein, and Romania. Uh, and that's one thing uh, we are building. We are building up the connectivity and the coverage in those countries. Uh, uh, the other the other chair I'm sitting at is um, uh, as most uh, as a startup, which is called Simple Hardware, where we are trying to produce uh, cool cheap, reliable, uh, long battery lasting devices. So my background is not technical. I never studied electro electronics or electrotechnics. So I please apologize if any deep knowledge people, I have seen that there are many uh, deep knowledge people in the web chat and in this webinar. So please apologize. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm in the middle. So I know something about the sensors and I know something about the sales and marketing, yeah, but I'm not the, 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 the the, the most deeply, deeply endo guru. Uh, so again, it's it's uh, the seminar, this webinar. It's about it's intermediate level, so don't expect any programming tips or any any talk about the UART and IC2 circuits. Uh, this is really just an introduction. Uh, I think a very important part will be also in Q and A that will follow. So we are, we have currently about 24 slides. We'll go through the slides. Again, all the slides and all the webinars is being recorded and will be available uh, for your internal usage. Uh, uh, and it's available, it will be available online. Um, uh, and one more warning, uh, there are hundreds of different sensors uh, that can be used in many different ways. So this is just for this this presentation is mainly for your inspiration and uh, first first orientation uh, new types of sensors appear almost every month so for instance we are not covering here any sensors for the parking uh, there are many more sensors available in the market so this is just this, this is one of just a basic introduction um, so when we go to the sensors uh, to the to the to the chips there are some of the features that each of the sensor uh, has. Uh, and we as hardware manufacturers and you as someone buying the devices should understand because uh, the price of the sensors and those features, they influence directly the behavior and the price price of the solution and of the device. Uh, most of the sensors are really cheap. Uh, they range from 10, 20 cents 
uh, the only really expensive sensors are some of the gas sensors, especially for CO2. And on the higher end those are also the GPS, GPS sensors. But basically most of the sensors that we'll be talking about are below one USD uh, pricing in volumes. Uh, of course, when you, when, when you buy it at volume of 10,000 or more. Uh, what's pretty important is to understand that the consumption of most of the sensors is pretty negligible in comparison to Sigfox emission. Even Sigfox seems to be very low in power consumption. Uh, the consumption of the sensors is even lower. So uh, uh, all the accelerometers, magnetometers, uh, temperature sensors, uh, they are, if you do the battery life calculation, they are mostly negligible. Again, the, the, the only exceptions are CO2 sensors and uh, GPS and maybe Wi-Fi sniffing, yeah. but we'll get to that later on. Then for some of the sensors, it's, it's a matter of longevity. Some of the sensors, most of the sensors, they, they, they last 10, 10, 15 years, but especially the gas sensors, they you need to, to keep in mind that some of them needs to be recalibrated or, or replaced within six months. Then each of the sensors, they have a different res resolution, sensitivity, and noise. So uh, when I have an accelerometer, I cannot use it. I can use it like for 90% of the use cases, but there will be also al always like 10% of the use cases where a different with different resolution, different sensitivity, or different noise level uh, sensors need to be used. So therefore, we are always asking about the use case, uh, our customers. Uh, because uh, uh, the use case is pretty important uh, to understand in order to apply the uh, proper sensors. Uh, the, other, uh, the other thing is, of course, precision. We'll get to the precision and the range of measurement. We'll get to that later on, especially with the temperature and humidity sensors. Uh, for your information, the size of the sensors, it can be from one to two millimeters. If I take the example of the simple a simple pack. So this small part here, it's really small, uh, is the temperature and humidity sensor, which is one millimeter on two millimeters. On the other hand, some of the gas sensors, they can be up to five centimeters, uh, five centimeters uh, big. So um, it depends. But most sensors uh, that we'll be talking about are really small. It's, it's a couple of millimeters only. Then don't forget about the operating temperature range, uh, because some of the some of the temperature some of the sensors work only at, at room temperature, or uh, there's a, always a, a temperature range. Uh, uh, so be aware of, the, of that one, and also be aware that uh, even we are promoting the IoT devices, secret devices, to be smart themselves. So there's some smartness even inside the sensors. So if I take, for instance, the accelerometer uh, there are accelerometer sensors they contain intelligence uh, that uh, <clears throat> can detect free fall or can detect uh, uh, pedometer counting of steps uh, without uh, without uh, without doing the processing on the on the on the mcu or on, on, the, on the microcontroller of, of the device uh, um, we'll, we'll start with uh, uh, with mems uh, MEMS sensors are basically magnetoelectromechanical sensors. They are the mostly widespread sensors in the uh, in the IoT world. And basically, if you take your mobile phone, so your mobile phone contains all those <coughs> all those sensors that are listed. It contains accelerometer, magnetometer, and gyroscope. Uh, it contains accelerometer because uh, you want uh, you want your display to be oriented properly. It contains magnetometer in order uh, to navigate you properly within the city. And it contains gyroscope in order to track your uh, driving in a tunnel. Uh, what is important to understand is the distinct distinction between those three sensors. Uh, basically, accelerometer measures primarily the vector of the orientation towards the center of Earth. So uh, when you read the data out of the accelerometer, you are able to tell precisely where the ground is or where, 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 where the vector going down down is. Uh, the other thing is that it can also uh, uh, measure acceleration. 
So the level of acceleration, whether there was any dump or there was a start of acceleration. But if the if the movement is continuous, if the movement is smooth, accelerometer cannot detect it. So it really needs to be its acceleration or position. Uh, magnetometer, it's a device that is measuring the direction to North Pole. Basically, it's a compass. Uh, and the gyroscope is a device that uh, measures steady movement in all directions. And I have more slides uh, describing each of them. Uh, so accelerometer usage, uh, most of the cases where we are, uh, that uh, we are using it extensively because we have used it all of it in the sample pack 2 when we are using it in sample pack 3 is that we are detecting movement. So when the pallet starts moving or when the container starts moving, we are detecting vibrations. So we are able to detect uh, the vibration or the movement of your chair, of his chair, of meeting room chair. We are able to detect a vibration of a machine and to count whether the machine was running or not running. Uh, you can also detect free fall. So if something falls, uh, if, you, if you are transporting TV sets and uh, you want to be sure that it has not fallen down, so we are able to detect free fall, any kind of impact detection uh, in the logistics. Uh, in the logistics, is that's uh, pretty important. And also the accelerometer can detect basically tilt or inclination. Uh, so the tilt inclination is, is, is um, for instance, uh, nice if you have electrical pole line, electrical poles, and you want to be sure that the poles are not inclined. So we can, uh, through accelerometer, you can measure the inclination with the precision of one uh, degree. And we are also using the inclination detection for some of the manhole, manhole monitoring where we are doing several POCs for. So we are able to, to when some, something inclines, so we are able to, to detect the inclination. Uh, then we have the magnetometer. Uh, we had to implement magnetometer because we were hoping that we would be able to do the door opening detection just through accelerometer. Uh, but if you have an office door which is opening slowly and smoothly, there is basically no acceleration, so the, you are not able to detect the door opening through accelerometer only. You need to implement magnetometer, where basically by uh, uh, by detecting the vertical change. We are able to uh, to tell whether the door gets open, whether it gets closed. Uh, what's good is that you don't need to do any calibration. So at least the algorithm that we are using, you don't need to do any uh, calibration for door door opening detection. Uh, the other use case this is also valve opening detection and mobile road sign orientation. Um, the one interesting thing is that you not not only need to measure the orientation towards the North Pole, but if you put close by a permanent magnet, so you can uh, measure the measure the orientation towards this, uh, this permanent magnet. Uh, I'm sorry. And then we have the gyroscope usage. We, are, we don't have gyroscope in our, in our devices, and I'm not sure whether any of the current Sigfox available devices are implementing gyroscope. Basically, gyroscope is uh, mostly used in stabilizing drones, cameras, and segways. So if you have a steady movement and you want to see it turn, it turn left, it turn right, it's, it got up, it's, it got down. So you are able to use uh, gyroscope. It's also good if you want to, to, to project paths uh, between different points uh, without uh, GPS, without GPS coverage. So you are able to tell how the car was driving in the town when there's no GPS, so you can deduce uh, all the movement based just on the gyroscope, gyroscope data. Gyroscope has pretty high power consumption, so one could use it, for instance, for the door opening as well, but we opted better for magnetometer because magnetometer has lower price and uh, lower price, uh, lower power consumption than gyroscope. Uh, and that's the smartness uh, with some of the latest, with some of the latest, there's a big innovation in, in, the, in the maps and in, in, the, in the sensor field, uh, uh, especially about the, all the features and intelligence that's inside of the sensors. If we would be doing this webinar uh, five or 10 years ago, it would look a little bit different, but nowadays this, the sensors can do a lot of stuff themselves. 
some of the sensors are able to detect activity uh, recognition. So whether we are biking, running, uh, jumping, uh, doing yoga, it can detect automatically and it can transfer this know-how without any major consumption to the to the IoT device. It can detect sleep recognition. It can detect human fall. Even a human fall is kind of complicated to detect uh, reliably. Uh, it can detect whether we are standing. It can detect pedometers, so how many steps have you taken during the day, and it can it can detect uh, gesture, gesture. So if if you are if you would be waving or rotating the stuff, so it can it can detect uh, it automatically, and you don't need to do the processing uh, on your IoT device, but can be done directly in the in the in, in the chip. So. Those were the, the classical. Those were the classical MEMS sensors. Uh, now we are at the read switch, which is the sensor which is oh, the, the red one. It's nicely, nicely to be seen. Uh, it can look different. It can look like in it will be in the glass tube, but this one is is is, is a full 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 color. Um, it's basically a switch that you are turning on and off uh, through an external permanent magnet. It's very reliable it's, and it's uh, switching also, it can switch very quickly. So it's used in the classical two-piece door sensors where you have the, the, the magnet and, and, and the counterpart, which I really love, which I really not love, I really hate it because it's really ugly and it's complicated to install. Therefore, we prepare the one-piece uh, installation of the door sensor, but if you still uh, need to use the two-piece installation, so the read sensor is basically the one doing the detection of, of proximity of the magnet. We have a lot of use cases for the track door opening detection, and you can also use this for use it for any kind of rotation, counting, or detection. Uh, basically, your uh, te tempomat on your, or your your speedometer on your bike is just a read sensor. Uh, with a magnet, which uh, which turns and it can really detect uh, and count count the the rotations, the revolutions. Uh, it's not that expensive sensor, uh, therefore we have it we have it on, on the on the device and it's and it's usable. Then we have the temperature and humidity sensors. Uh, they are very often combined. Uh, basically, we are using it combined because it was cheaper to get it in, in combination than, than to have just a separate temperature sensor. Um, uh, uh, so we are using humidity even if, uh, even we are we are in the simple pack we are IP68, so we are uh, completely waterproof. So we are still we are we have still the ability to to sense the humidity inside the box. Um, uh, one 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 of the stuff. It's, it's getting, uh, especially for the cold chain monitoring in logistics, it's it's getting a little bit uh, complicated because there are a lot of local regulations, a lot of regulations on the European level. Uh, just be aware uh, of the confusion. There is something, uh, there's a big difference between precision of the temperature and or, or the, or the, or the, or the humidity sensor and the resolution. So basically the precision is if I, uh, when I have a temperature of 20 degrees, so was I measuring 21 or 20, 20.5? 20 so what's, what's, what is the precision? And the resolution is basically what is the smallest piece of, of, of smallest piece of information or the smallest bit of ch temperature change that can be, uh, that can be reported. Also the temperatures, uh, they differ in the precision quite often and quite widely uh, among the different temperature ranges. So most of the temperature ranges are precise above the zero, but they are less precise below the zero. So again, please uh, discuss uh, what kind of precision it's needed and deploy the devices according to that one. What's interesting and that what we didn't know is that for most of the measurements in the external in the culture monitoring, you don't need the external probes. Of course, you can always have the external probe if you need to have like a really uh, 0 0.1 temperature change monitoring, but for most of the core chain monitoring, uh, having the temperature even even inside uh, inside a plastic a plastic case, so, and the, the temperature change gets to the to the to the te to the temperature sensor only like in 20 or 30 minutes. It's okay for most of the core chain monitoring use cases. 
And the other thing is uh, that the temperatures can be also measured basically free of charge on the processor or on the accelerometer. Uh, but be aware that most of those measurements are uh, giving you roughly uh, 2%, uh, 2 degrees Celsius precision, so it's not the most precise. Uh, but it's okay if you have, for instance, the, the leakage detector, the simple leak. So we are detecting the freezing point. We are detecting the not normal room temperature, and we are detecting basically kind of fire fire event. So uh, even for the for the freeze detection, you don't you don't need one degree precision. The same one for the abnormal room temperature for the for the for the fire situation. So even the the MCU temperature can be used quite often. Uh, then that is the light uh, the light sensor. Basically, we implemented it on, 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 on demand of one of the French IoT consulting companies because they are detecting box opening. Basically, when the goods are delivered to the customer, they want to know when the box got open and where and when it got opened. So we are able to detect uh, light ingression. But it also can be used for office factory hall lights on off monitoring and can be used for the manhole cabinet opening your know, safety box opening so there are many many different combination uh, when it can be used our implementation doesn't doesn't measure precisely the 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 level of light uh, so it's more we are using it in an off on off situation darkness or lightness uh, but in agriculture you can use it if you would if you use a different implementation you can of course use it for for light intensity uh, in agriculture. The tensometer is, is a kind of, uh, it's, it's a sort of sensor that basic, basically measuring, it's measuring weight. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a pity that it's, it's a little bit on the expensive side and also it has some longer bit issue uh, because uh, there would be a lot of applications. Uh, currently, the, the main ones are the Beehive uh, weighting monitoring or the IBC Europe pilot weighting. Uh, but in the future, if, if really there would be uh, something on, on, on the good on the good price level and good uh, long term uh, reliability. You can, for instance, you can measure the pile of the papers that you have uh, ready for your laser laser printer. And you can do in time delivery. You can type, you can do in time delivery of the of the paper uh, to the to, to the office. So tensometer has a lot of promise, uh, and there are some big companies doing some cool stuff with, with tensometer. But it's not easy to implement. It really needs to be use case specific. Uh, then we have the barometric pressure. Uh, we we are we still don't have the barometric pressure on our device. So we are we are just in the design phase of having it in, in the like dot point one release of the device uh, it's not that easy to implement because it's it needs to be from especially from the mechanical point of view because it needs to be it, it needs to be connected directly to the air and it's used uh, mostly for sensing flight taking off or landing so for instance the louis vuitton louis vuitton of course louis vuitton stick and they have the barometer there in order to to fire the monarch sensing uh, and then there are some application if you want to sense the container being being lifted up or down in the in, in the ports by several meters uh, the barometer is the, the thing that you have in your in your skin watch that tells you how many highest meter you are high or how many meters have you have you skipped on uh, during the day Then you have the different distance, proximity, and volume meters. They can be they can be based on different technologies, laser infra, infrared uh, radar technologies. So there are many many available technologies, um, or even capacity. Basically, uh, when you, when your phone uh, gets uh, when the display of your phone gets off, it's a, that's uh, during during the phone call. That's the proximity sensor. Mostly, they are used for tank level monitoring. Uh, they are using for a cycle bin opening blockage uh, detection. There was a really nice case that we had in Prague, uh, where uh, you are you are not able, you are not only able to monitor the the capacity or what's inside the what inside the cycle bin, but there have been very very often there were use cases 
or cases where the, the paper was was blocking the inlet into the recycle bin. So there were devices that were monitoring the distance of the inlet, whether it's free, and you are whether you are able to insert more paper into the into the recycle bin. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they can be they can be uh, used uh, again. It's, it needs to be very very uh, case specific. It's hard to do any general uh, general uh, general distance uh, dis dis distance meter that would be usable for many use cases. So we don't have any we don't have any distance or proximity volume meter in our devices. Then there you have the classical pair sensor. That's probably just something that uh, everyone knows about. It's basically a low, low, low resolution camera in infrared spectrum, uh, and it detecting movement of objects with different temperatures. So you know that from the movies when the people are taking on their silver jackets uh, to have the same temperature as, as the neighborhood, and the pair sensor cannot see them. Uh, so pair sensor is is, is definitely usable uh, and deployable in the in the, in the, in the SIGFOX ecosystem. Then we have the gas sensors. They tend to be a little bit on the expensive side. And some of them, they consume uh, a lot of energy. Uh, maybe the two exceptions are the CO sensor. Uh, the, the CO sensor is the one that detects the deadly bad combustion even my friends really got killed uh, because there was uh, there was this uh, there was this um, uh, this bad combustion of, of, of the of some of the of the, some of the stoves. Uh, normally, the sensor uh, the IoT device, uh, of course, emits a siren, but sometimes you also want to transmit the information. So that is one or two CO sensor currently being available in the market. And the sensor is kind of cheap and low power. Uh, then we have the VOX sensor, or the, the, the it's it's basically measuring uh, uh, not good gases in the in the office, uh, in the office or school uh, buildings. It's used for the uh, quality air quality monitoring. The the sensors are pretty cheap and low power as well. So and it can be recalculated uh, to the approximate CO two level. That's a sensor that we are going to use in in our simple temp, in our simple temp product. Once once we'll have it available, it's not measuring the CO2 to to the absolutely precise 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 level, but it gives you a good indication whether you should open the window. And then you have the CO2 sensors. The CO2 sensors tend to be on the expensive side, 30 to 40 uh, USD. Uh, pretty high battery consumption because they quite often they need to heat that they heat they are heating the gases and uh, they tend to have a short uh, lifetime six or one year six six months or one year so it's not uh, don't expect to get a very precise co2 sensor anyhow anyhow soon but i i don't i don't think there's that many use cases for the really very high precise co2 sensor uh, then there's a smoke detector, classic one. Uh, currently, one or two uh, gas detectors are so small. Smoke detectors are av available, and they are basically that they what they really do is the optical recognition of the particles in in, in, in smoke. So uh, it can detect uh, fire even before any heat emanates. So just just a smoke. But we are of course not supposed to. You're not supposed to use cigarettes in the same same room because otherwise it will detect the, the, the cigarette smoke is the same as the burn as, as a fire smoke. Then we have the we have the flat detector. Basically, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, you have two <clears throat> conductive points, and once you connect them through 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 water. It changes the it changes the conductivity, uh, and it it uh, detects flat pretty reliably. You know, just don't try with uh, dist distilled water because distilled water doesn't conduct electricity. But otherwise, um, all other waters uh, conduct electricity pretty well. So um, be be just aware that for the leakage detector, in order to achieve the ten ten years battery life and resilience against false alarms. Uh, to choose uh, a quality, a, a quality products because some of the Chinese 
allows for one or two years only. Uh, then we have the, the metal sensors, you know, wind, rainfall, soil humidity. Uh, they are not, uh, they seem to be quite uh, easy to implement, to, to do or to use. With, for wind, you can use the classical uh, mechanical one or you can use ultrasound uh, measuring. Uh, for rainfall, you are also you have many options uh, how to how to how to measure rainfall. Uh, the issue here is freezing, of course. So it it needs to be freeze, freeze resistant. Some birds can put nests in, in, into the into the into the uh, into the rainfall sensors. You have leaves, so the uh, being in the field means a lot of external factors. And then for the soil humidity. Again, it seems to be quite easy, but for most of the soil humidity sensors, there's an issue that the salt gets uh, close to the sensors and they, are, they cease to work within one or two years. So uh, again, with the soil humidity, uh, uh, please choose high quality products uh, in order for your devices to have a, a, a good, uh, a good uh, lifespan. Uh, very interesting are the sound sensors. That I think it's it's where, where, where we should see far more Sigfors devices than we are seeing currently. Uh, you can uh, either compare the sound that, uh, that the sensor hears to the to the one pre-recorded. So, for instance, uh, some there are some use cases where you have a classical alarm system, and when the when the when the alarm uh, siren goes on. Uh, Another IoT, Sigfox IoT sensor just hears the siren and transmits it through Sigfox, so you don't need to do any electrical connection in the systems. Uh, you can, uh, you can uh, of course, um, detect any kind of, uh, analyze any kind of high pitches or, or non, 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 not normal sounds. And uh, where, is, where there's a big future, you can do a lot of the analysis through artificial intelligence and neural networks. Uh, because you can do the analysis locally and transfer only the information to the to the to the backbone through through Sigfox. Uh, major use cases is preventive maintenance, listening to the listening. Basically, it happens still. So uh, when you do monitoring of equipment, people are coming to the equipment, they are listening. Is there any hissing? Is there any any not normal sound? Uh, and the regulation where you really need to listen to the devices like each week, and this can be done through sound sensors. Uh, one interesting, uh, one really interesting project that we have seen, and maybe some of the hackathons could develop it, is the detection of wall spraying. Basically, the uh, the, the can, the, the the spray can uh, emits a distinct, distinct, distinctive sound, and you can very easily do the the, the detection of the uh, wall sprayers, especially on devices where you don't want. To destroy the houses and the painting. Then there's a big category of external sensors. There are really hundreds of industrial grade sensors. Uh, you have to understand that they are pretty standardized, so they are using, they are sending data in digital pulses or in the zero to 10 voltage. Uh, so if, if there is no available uh, sensor on partner Sigfox.com, you can always go to Alibaba or you can go to to any any kind of any kind of uh, online portal, you can purchase external sensors, and you can uh, con uh, connect them to the universal I/O devices, being either Adonis or the one that I am referring to here is the Unis uh, Unis uh, uh, Unio uh, universal sensor that is able to transfer those signals and those those stuff uh, to uh, to Sigfox. Um, and I think we are pretty closing now, and the timing is okay. I'm five minutes late. Uh, I have one slide about location sensing. Uh, it's not the most most comprehensive one. We maybe we'll do some one another webinar just just totally about the location sensing. This is just a basic uh, basic overview. Of course, you have the GPS. What's important to understand about the GPS, uh, most of you would know, but there are still some people who don't understand that the GPS is not communicating with the satellite. There's no communication between the satellites. GPS is just listening to the timings being sent by the satellites or by some terrestrial beacons to improve the precision. Uh, 
but are not communicating communicating with the satellite. Uh, it's uh, pretty uh, it's pretty precise, one to five meter precision. It can be, of course, higher if you have if, if you leave it on on one place for 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 one or two days. So you can get up to centimeter precision. Uh, there are medium to high power consumptions. I used to be high power consumption. Recently, we have seen some chips that are pretty pretty okay with the power consumption. So it can last even on small batteries for a long time. Uh, what is big a disadvantage and needs to be explained that it needs open sky. So me being here sitting under the roof, if I would have a just pure GPS here, it wouldn't work. Uh, one needs to understand that uh, what we have in our mobile phones, it's not pure GPS. It's a GPS. Basically, the GPS is working on only uh, outdoors in the fields and in the woods. Uh, mostly the GPS uh, is combined with BTS sensing, Wi-Fi sensing, uh, gyroscope. So don't think that you, once you get a GPS that you'll get the same kind of location data as you would from your mobile phone because there are two different two different things. Uh, then the thing that, that uh, Sigfox is promoting pretty heavily is the Wi-Fi sniffing, uh, basically collecting the MAC addresses of the nearby uh, Wi-Fi stations sending it to sending it to via Sigfox sending it to the backend and then analyzing the MAC addresses either through Wi-Fi Atlas, Wi-Fi or uh, Sigfox uh, Wi-Fi Atlas or through Google APIs. Google is providing API uh, where you submit the MAC addresses and you'll get the, the location with the precision of around 100 meters, 50 to 100 meters. It depends how many MAC addresses, whether you are sending addresses high as well or not. Uh, big uh, one of the thing is uh, an, an advantage of the Wi-Fi Atlas is that uh, it's okay if you send just one MAC address. So you'll get uh, GPS coordinates even from one MAC address, even with some not total precision, but you, you'll get it. For Google, you need at least two MAC addresses in order in order uh, Google to work properly. Uh, what we have implemented uh, based on some customer demands is uh, something that we call Wi-Fi beacon sniffing or high precision sniffing. Uh, where we are uh, collecting basically the MAC addresses that we've seen it by storing it in the device and then sending to Sigfox uh, not the whole MAC addresses because the MAC address is pretty long. It's six bytes long and it cannot be compressed. So we are not sending the whole MAC addresses, but we are sending like only the pointers together with RSSI. So within one message, we are able to achieve uh, five MAC addresses and five RSSI, five signal strengths. And we are able to achieve precision of between two, two and three meters, even without knowing without knowing uh, where the Wi-Fi station is. Uh, good about it is Wi-Fi are pretty cheap, and you, if you want to do the identification of the, of, of, of the store or of the storage place, in order to use the, the Wi-Fi beacon sniff, sniffing, you just implement, you just put into the space two or three more beacons, and that's it. You can get pretty good precision. Then you have the classical Bluetooth beacons. I think uh, Bluetooth can achieve precision of around one meter. Uh, medium cost needs uh, needs specific beacon beacons and needs setup. Uh, then there's a couple of companies. One of them is a Czech company from from uh, which is called Savio, which does the ultra wideband active RFID uh, sensing, uh, where you can go down with precision to about. 10 to, to 30 centimeters uh, location location precision, but it's pretty expensive solution, especially uh, and it's uh, really industrial grade industrial grade solution. And then, of course, uh, uh, I would say the most important one, even uh, even it, I think it's it's uh, undervalued, is the classical BTS fingerprinting, the classical Sigfox Atlas where without having any extra, extra external sensors, just by analyzing the signal, the signal strengths of Sigfox, you are able to achieve uh, a precision of location about one kilometer, one kilometer, which is important for you to know in which factory the product is at, whether the pallet is on the on the on the on the ship or whether the pallet is still in the port or whether the pallet is on the border. So um, uh, Sigfox Atlas, I think it, it has uh, uh, 
even better future so if we start developing the technology and improving the technology. Uh, uh, but I, we, we should see definitely more use cases for and more uh, uh, market implementation for for Sigfox Atlas because it's basically free of charge. You get it with each and every uh, device. Um, okay, I think I I have I have done. Uh, so I will just I have one more slide and that's uh, we, we have we have the, the whole series uh, and then we'll go to the Q and A. We'll be touching the simple hardware API six. Uh, why is it revolutionary? We had to define our own API to manage the hardware because we have so many sensors. Uh, so that then we have a presentation about IOFROG, which is the which is the demo platform for many of the devices, not only our devices, but IOFROG is currently supporting fifty different devices. Uh, then we'll have a webinar about the six biggest mistakes I've been doing. I've been doing Sigfox sales since four years, so I've I've gone through a lot of the mistakes. Um, then we have a really nice use case for uh, insurance companies, and we'll be doing an, a specific uh, webinar about the insurance and how to sell to them. Uh, and we're also preparing a specific spe special sales kit that will be available for you to demo and to, to do a really quick demonstration and very, very successful demonstration to insurance companies. And then the last one, and it will be in Lego boxes we trust and the whole notion uh, why we are not providing end-to-end -end solutions uh, uh, and when we think that the sales kits or the devices together with the platform is a better offer where the system integrators can build uh, their own solution, their own integration, and they can sell to the end customers. So uh, I would conclude my presentation if and uh, I am please uh, post any question I will I will try to I will try to reply to them I will always uh, try to read the question I don't know whether you see every one of you see the questions uh, so uh, thanks for praising that the audio and video is perfect that you hear me hear me fine I'm, I'm glad to, to hear that again the webinar will be recorded will be recorded uh, and else is will be available on our website uh, we also appreciate any feedback uh, about uh, the next themes of the webinar so if you would have any more themes that you want that you want it to be better but to have better train or better knowledge uh, one of the verticals that will be working and we are trying to collect together with Cifros more information is about the coaching monitoring so culture monitoring will be one of the definitely one of the themes that we are preparing uh, long term. Uh, thanks for the thanks. Yeah, we can will share directly this PowerPoint presentation. Uh, we uh, in the basically we'll we'll put it online and you'll be also able to comment. So if you would need any more more detailed uh information about any of the topics just put a comment and i will try to i will try to fill it uh, uh, the, the white spaces thanks for the praise yeah but it will be definitely released it's it's an automatic system so to see if some of your partners i'm looking for partner to help me build would love to see a presentation of some of your partners i'm looking uh, of a partner to help me build a simple poc base on your units Again, uh, please, uh, for all the, what we are currently a little bit better, uh, yes, yeah, there will be a recording of this webinar, it will be online. Uh, what we are battling all the time with most of the customers, and there are two things. Please don't do POCs. Uh, it's kind of intuitive, uh, but it's, uh, you know, people love gadgets. They, they love to play. They want to show off that it really works. But in most of the cases, what we have seen is that really you need to spend a lot of time with your customer before doing the POC. You need to do discovery, you, know, you need to do proper POC definition. So don't just jump in and don't show off that it works uh, because it really works. Like Fox is working, so it's, you don't need to prove any longer that it works. So please spend far more time before doing any POC. That's one thing. The other one is please share us the more as more detailed we don't need to know the names of your customers, but we need to, to know the description of the use case. So, uh, 
uh, if you would send us photo, if you send us uh, the, 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 the data that you need to get from the POC or from, from the use case, the more, the, the more data we get, the better we can advise you how to set up the devices or whether our devices are uh, ready for, the, for your use case. Okay, thanks. I will wait one more, one more, one or two more minutes. Thanks, thanks for doing doing hardware. It's not easy. I have done a lot of stuff in in the past. I have done I have done a lot of stuff in, in the cloud. I have done a lot of stuff in the internet portals. Uh, doing hardware is one of the most uh, difficult things that I have ever, ever done. Uh, so uh, please also have had patience with with us and with other hardware providers. Uh, it's hard to imagine the complexity of putting all the parts together and all the firmware together. Uh, so uh, please be patient with us. Please be patient with us. Uh, our website, our website URL is uh, it's simple. It's simple hw simple agw.eu that's the website url and we have a special a special section there for downloads and for the banner and, and for the box and we'll be posting it we are also doing uh, currently we are doing a youtube recording so this will be recorded and posted on youtube on our youtube channel so please subscribe to the youtube, YouTube channel and the next time we'll be also doing facebook streaming so uh, facebook will be uh, facebook stream will be available as well so if there are no more questions, I will write down if, if you can see I know uh, I didn't put my email address. My email is Pavel at Sodomka.cz. I've got a company, so I'm not using company company URL because it will be I don't want I don't want to email boxes. So so Pavel at Sodomka.cz. So if you have any questions, they need to contact me. Also online chat on the website so if you have any questions. So, so thanks for your time. time. If you have a question, feel to read to me. Enjoy. I will do the beautiful day. The rest of us will make up the video. So, I will have a few of you that are also concerned with something that is worldwide. So, so uh, I don't know, no, no, it can be, 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 it can be,